Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Catherine Andrioli. Emotional testimony today from a young woman who lost her arm in a boating accident in Boston Harbor two years ago. Nicole Berthium of Auburn took the stand and told a Suffolk Superior Court judge just how dramatically her life has changed since May of 2015. Prosecutors say Berthium was on a boat with 14 others when she jumped in the water to get a seat cushion and a football. As she began drifting from the boat, 26-year-old Alexander Williams started the engine to move closer to her, severing her arm and severely injuring her. Williams was, char was charged with negligent operation of a boat, furnishing alcohol to minors and tampering with evidence. Today he planned to change his plea to guilty as Berthium and her parents explained his poor choices and how they changed their lives forever. It has almost been two years since I lost my arm. Although I try to have the best outlook considering my circumstances, that does not make it any easier. It does not make it go away and the emotional toll this has taken on my family and myself is unimaginable. Because of their actions, first and foremost, my daughter, Nicole, is forever handicapped. But secondly, everyone that is in Nicole's world, family, friends, co-workers, and classmates will never be the same. Today's hearing was continued, but the judge expressed her intention to continue the case without finding for two years contingent upon Williams's completion of 200 hours of community service at Spalding Rehabilitation and paid restitution for Berthium and her family. A special forum in Sutton Thursday discussed the importance of placing students into the workplace in central Massachusetts. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito was the keynote speaker at the fifth annual Blackstone Valley Business and Education Forum. The event highlighted the importance of exposing students to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related to careers. The Blackstone Valley Education Foundation says students need to be given the skills and to further their education for successful employment. And what we need to do right now is re educate the future workforce and re-educate the educators about the skills and education that are going to be necessary to get into advanced manufacturing and to thrive in that career over the next several decades. All 11 school districts in the foundation attended Monday's forum. Addressing the opioid epidemic, Governor Charlie Baker visits Webster Thursday to tour the Regional Resource Center for Recovering Addicts. It provides strict supervision for people going through drug courts and similar programs. Our Olivia Lemon has the story. Today we're working on a writing unit. The lessons needed to help a person who's battled addiction are being taught here. The Regional Resource Center in Webster conducts routine drug testing and offers help in writing a resume. It's a real assistance to the court system to help keep those people who are sort of in trouble keep them out of prison and keep them on the right track. The center is funded by the Worcester County Sheriff's Department. It works directly with district drug courts and intensive probation supervision programs. When people come in here, they talk to a case manager, they find out where they're at, what their needs are. They most likely are going to have a drug test done that day to make sure they're complying. Um, they also have the ability to go into uh, classrooms. Thursday, Governor Charlie Baker toured the center. His hope is to create programs like this one across the state. I've always thought that one of the biggest things that folks who find themselves in this situation face is uh, a lack of places to go where they can get good advice and good guidance and good support to help them figure out how to take the next few steps because there's no such thing as sort of one step. The center serves close to 300 clients from across central Massachusetts. Graduates from drug court or similar programs say they are thankful for the resources offered. Just one day at a time trying to you know, rebuild my life and be an adult and be a part of the community. After this program, this, like, there's endless options. Governor Baker says the work the Sheriff's Department has put into the Resource Center is paying off. This is a process for people, and, and that's really what they're doing here, is teeing people up to work their way through that process and to support them along the way. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. The Edgemere Drive-In on Route 20 in Shrewsbury has been vacant for decades, but it could soon be home to a $60 million development, including apartments and a grocery store. The proposed development on the 75-acre property would feature a market basket grocery store, five businesses, and more than 300 housing units and apartments. The planning board met tonight in Shrewsbury to discuss the proposed plans with residents. 
Well, getting the site developed is a good thing. Um, the Edmere Drive-In has been vacant for got to be 30 years at least. Uh, personally, I have concerns about 300 apartments um, being added to the inventory right now. But we'll see what they have to say. That could change. They might come in with a different scenario of how many apartments they want or a different configuration. The project is still in its early stages to move forward. It will require a special permit and a site plan approval along with the town's approval of two proposed warrant articles. The women's lacrosse team at Worcester State University paying a special tribute tonight. The team hosted the One Love game dedicated to Yearly Love, a senior lacrosse player at the University of Virginia who was killed by her ex-boyfriend in an act of domestic violence. The team dedicated tonight's game to the One Love Foundation, created in honor of Yearly. The foundation raises awareness for domestic violence. Team members reached their goal of running a million yards per person in honor of Yards for Yearly. Tonight, both teams and fans walked together Together around the track at halftime to support the cause. Head coach Kelly Down says it's important to bring awareness to issues of domestic violence on college campuses and remember a member of the college lacrosse community impacted by domestic Raising violence. Raising awareness um, yeah. more for domestic violence because again the stats are true. One in three women um, are in domestic violence uh, relationship and one in four men. How big of a deal this is. Mm -hmm. So and just how lucky you guys yeah. are to play the sport you guys love. Yeah, to not take it for granted. You can find out more about the One Love Foundation on their website, joinonelove.org. And the Worcester Police Department promotes seven officers today at City Hall. Worcester Police, Police Chief Steve Sargent presided over the ceremony. Seven officers were promoted to the rank of sergeant and took oaths before family members and friends. It's the department's second promotion ceremony in two months. A new academy class is scheduled to start at the end of this month. And Worcester fire recruits showed city leaders what they've learned during training by bringing them inside a burning building today. Our Roslyn Flaherty got a first-hand look as well and has more on the city's newest firefighters preparing for the job. 26 new Worcester fire recruits got a chance to show city leaders and the media today what they have been learning and doing over the past 14 weeks. And today we got a chance to go inside and check it out for ourselves. Worcester fire recruits go into a burning building to put out the flames. You can see we can throw ladders, we can use water, the fires can be fairly big. So it gives them a pretty good uh, test for when they get out on the street. The recruits showed off their skills on a simulated demonstration Thursday after 14 weeks of training. There's a lot more to it than you would think. Coming into here, I didn't know all that. We talked about chemistry, we talked about building construction, EMS. Uh, we have to be very tactical. Recruit Leah Caldwell says she has lived in Worcester her entire life and grew up next to a fire station. You see the red trucks go by and you never think that one day that could be you. Caldwell says the first time she went into the Worcester Fire Department's burn building, she knew this is what she wanted to do. It kind of gives you the feel for you're in the right place. Today we got a chance to go inside and take on training firsthand. Everybody go and experience what the firefighter has to do. Everybody just thinks it's a matter of going in, just, you know, putting water on, but there's a lot of work to get that line into place. District Training Chief Andrew White says even after training in a controlled building, there is still a lot more learning to do. This is just the basic academy. Every day they go to work, they're going to be learning. Chief White says the live fire simulation is all about teamwork and coordination. Whatever th thing they're doing here, advancing a hose line or throwing a ground ladder or anything, they have to work as one unit. Well, it's a lot harder than it looks. The chief says all this equipment weighs about 80 pounds. And now the 26 recruits will graduate April 13th. In Worcester, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. And a messy day for drivers out there today. Heavy rainfall soaking the roads and creating some slick condition. Here's a look outside our Higgins Street studio. As you can see, there are some large puddles and it's very wet out there tonight. Visibility was reduced out on the roads earlier, as you might have seen during your commute. We'll have more on the forecast coming up later in the show. Heavy rains hitting central Massachusetts today and driver safety experts warn this weather can cause slick conditions on roadways. The Central Mass Safety Council's Rob Masser says people often don't realize how dangerous rainy weather can be for drivers. He says the weather today is a dangerous mix. With heavy rainfall and cold temperatures, the roads can be slick. People don't realize that any kind of weather conditions other than perfect sunny warm days, you really should be slowing down a bit because of the surface changes that you're yeah, that you're dealing with as you're driving. 
Fact is, though, that we don't have snow, so people think, okay, you know, we're beyond the snow time. We should probably be okay with traction, but traction is still compromised by water as well as the cold. Masser says when hydroplaning, do not brake, but slowly let your foot off the gas and steer until your wheels make contact with the road again.